Hey, welcome back to Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi Warrior for Jesus, Ben Hillestead. I'm continuing my building of the Ark series with Part 9, The Divine Seed. And, you know, we got so much to look at. You know, we're just going to keep plowing through this and, uh, you know, see how far we get. But, uh, The Divine Seed, you know... In the, la the last video, we are talking about the waters meeting, which is the waters from above is the male, the waters from below are the female. It's a divine consummation. It brings forth travail. You know, there are the mighty, the fallen, the men of renown. They're on both the good and the bad side. But if you look up the word uh, brave, you know, like the home of the brave... You know, like the it's it, like it's a good thing to be brave. At least in the Bible, it doesn't look that way. There's other words that are similar to bravery, like uh, to have courage. God all the time says, "Have courage, have no fear." Courage means to be firm, to have a solid foundation. Uh, to uh, to grow stout, to grow uh, to to. You know, it can actually be negative to grow stout or to be too firm, like you're locked into a position, you know. But to have strength. Chazak, Hebrews uh, 23, 88. 20 times uh, in 20 verses in the Bible. But the divine seed, it takes two to tango. So that's the mystery here. You know, just like spiritual waters are almost, it's kind of like having sex consummation of the ages. You know, as we look at that patriarchal line, you know, from Adam on down through Christ, just like the, at the macro level, there's this huge event that looks, it's like a big washing machine on a galactic level of waters meeting and the filth being washed out of the earth from both the sea, the land, and, and the sky. But likewise, the divine seed is a cycle that goes again and again and again, and there's a dark side and a light side, the yin and the yang. But the dark side, they see the consummation and the, the, uh, the having a divine child through a king and a queen bee, you know, of divine blood and ancestry and uh, DNA and, and what forth. And they think these people, their king and their queen bee, they want them to be, you know, of that divine seed, you know, Abraham or lit up a Noah, a Moses, or whatever, but, you know, they're dark, just because they're not, they don't, they're not working with God, and if you're not working with God, then even if you have divine seed, what is produced is not a divine child, it is a child of iniquity, but the dark side has that path, but guess what, it's there on the light side, which is having a king and a queen as well, you know, Christ is the groom coming back for the bride. Noah took a wife before he climbed on the ark. But you know what? It's the same thing. It's hooking up a queen, a, you know, and a king. But they're different. You know, on the dark side, a queen bee, you know, has worker bees and, and you know, do, you know, it's all about the, the, the pyramid of power. Whereas on the light side, when these kings and queens get together, it's in humbleness and goodness and in pure love, and uh, you know what, it's the finger and the hand of God at work, and it's his plan, the master architect, that you can see, especially through the female side, the woman, the divine hand of God moving forward, and that's hopefully, if I don't run out of time, what I want to show you today is the divine hand of God on the female side, the queen bee moving forward. But, uh, you know, just to backtrack a little bit, you know, Adam couldn't find a help meet, a whole pen, from the all the animals, the beasts, the cattle, and whatnot that God brought before him that he was naming. But, you know, he, he couldn't find the right spirit, the divine seed to hook up with him. So Eve was created, the first queen bee, and Adam immediately elevated her. Cain had the next queen bee, the mystery wife. Some people say, oh, he married a Nadite, but that still could be divine seed because the fallen sons of God and sons of God had been on earth for quite a long time. You know, and I think some of them could even possibly have mated with mankind in a positive light if they actually prayed to God and did it 
through God and with God, you know, so I wouldn't even rule that out. And therefore, kings and rulers could have been born on earth for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That's just how it was done. Through God and a divine offspring arrives, you know, that is actually a little more than a normal human because it has this special DNA mixture. And I would say it manifests in powers, in abilities, and lifespans, you know, whereas normal humans just live like a hundred years, even back in the days of Adam. You know, the other people that were living, they didn't live for thousands of years. Only Adam did. He was special. But anyway, if we look at the, uh, the timeline. The next uh, kind of questionable spots is right at uh, in both family trees. Irad means fleet, fleet of foot or fleet of ships. But his son was Mekuyael, and we don't know who his wife was, but it sure looks like that's where a divine pairing happened because his son Meth. Thuzael is, is of God, and I think he was lit up because he then had Lamech, who was a powerful man, and I think that's where this interbreeding with the fallen sons of God, because they came to earth in the days of Jared, which match up with Methusael and Lamech over on the cane line. You know, it's this family tree. These guys knew each other. They weren't living thousands of miles apart. But the bottom line is, we had daughters from the Seth line being taken over to the Cain line to be the wives of Lamech. And it was once again princesses being hooked up with a king, Lamech, a powerful man. Lamech supposedly is the one that uh, shot Cain, who was the wanderer. And he was traveling around the world, Cain was. He was a mighty man. And I think he was building lots of pyramids and going all around the world because he was on, he, he had the divine lineage in him and he probably lived a long lifespan. But, uh, you know, there's more mystery, though, because it's right in here, the Seth line, with Enoch and uh, Methuselah and Lamech and down to Noah. Noah's wife came from the, uh, the Cain line, came back across, Naamah. But there was all sorts of stuff going on there, because back with Mahalil, which was the son of Canaan, his name was Praise God. He married, his wife was Dinah, which means judgment. And once again, there was a judgment being made on earth. It was made way before Noah started building the ark because Canaan had the doomstones. Uh, you know, Enoch knew that uh, judgment was coming. Same with Methuselah. Methuselah means the dart, which is part of the end time cycle, is the dart at the heart of the dark side, part of their tribulation. But Mahalil, he, it was his daughters, Ada and Zillah, that went over to the Cain side to marry Lamech. But uh, Jared and then Enoch, Enoch's wife was Edna, the daughter of Azrael, which sounds like one of the fallen angels, you know, the one that taught makeup in eyelids and whatnot. So I just think right in that time, there was this interbreeding, everybody trying to hook up and get the divine seed lines going with their kings and their queens. The only question is, was it a dark manifestation or a manifestation of light? And I guarantee you, I can show you verses in the Bible where God talks about the children of iniquity and dark manifestations, children of sin being born. But there's also children of light. And each of us has our choice during our lifetimes. Even children born in the darkness can come out into the light. You know, that's the glory of God. But uh, ultimately, um, there's a little bit of mystery in there. But uh, here's where I'm going to make a tie-in, hopefully before I forget about it. But Methuselah, who was the great, with the grandfather of Noah, he had like five or six kids, you know, Elisha, Naama, which was another duplicate of Naama, and uh, Elimelech. Elimelech is important because in the book of Ruth, uh, you know, the story of Ruth, I think it's in Ruth 4, but uh, a kinsman of Boaz. Boaz was a mighty man of renown, a divine seed line. He was one of the, you know, his name is one of the, the temples, one of the pillars of the temple. You know, it's in the, the Masonic lodges and, and it was in Solomon's temple. But he was a mighty man of my of renown. One of his kinsmen said, hey man, one of uh, your cousins or whatever, Naomi, she's going to sell some land that belonged to Elimelech. Elimelech was a brother of Methuselah. So right there, you can see that divine seed line dribbling on down right to the time of Ruth. And it's important because 
The story of Ruth cannot be denied, but that's where the seed line is passed through a daughter, man. And basically, uh, this property is being sold, but uh, the, there's some people that are praying, and they, they're talking to Boaz, and they say, May the wife you get be like Rachel and Leah, who were the wives of Jacob that built the house of Israel, a spiritual house of believers. And then the wife turned out to be Ruth. And she was a queen bee, my friends, you know. And she hooked up with Boaz, and uh, she bore a child. And uh, basically, what it says about that conception is when Boaz went in to know his wife, the Lord produced the consummation and the child. And uh, their son was named Obed which uh, basically means servant. And he was the father of Jesse, was the father of David, which eventually became the seed lion for Jesus Christ, who came as a servant. But the woman represents the servant. Ruth was serving God when she married Boaz, and her offspring was servant. All of it pointing to the divine birth of Jesus Christ through a virgin, through the Holy Spirit, you know, of the divine seed lion. So, you know, right there is where the queen bee and the king manifest forth in, in a story, in, a, in the cycle of a pairing, a wedding of divine birth lines. So uh, I want to touch on a couple of, of other things real quickly. Um, you know, one of the other cycles that are along these timelines is souls of people and being a shepherd or being a tiller of the ground like Cain, where you're just doing your own works of your own hands in the 3D world. But Abel was a shepherd. But there's people all throughout these time cycles that are shepherds. Abraham, Noah, Abel, Moses. But they're all in charge of moving people, cattle, forward, souls. Abraham, when he came out of uh, uh, Ur, they said he brought forth all of his possessions, all the souls that were with him. Hebrews 53, 14. Nefesh, which means sometimes, nine times in the Bibles, it means creatures, you know, animals. But it was when Abraham did his leap of faith, he took all their possessions, their substance, uh, which substance is Hebrews 73, 99, which means livestock. Things they had fashioned. How had they fashioned them? Abraham, through his own spiritual beliefs. That's what brought him out of Ur's because he was having problems with Nimrod and all the idols and all the false gods they were worshiping. But he had people around him. So as he marched out of Ur, he had a whole you know, house or tribe or whatever the heck you want to call it, army traveling with him, souls, people, and probably some animals too. But what you'll see is God continually, time and time and time again, keeps using this verbiage on cattle. You know, uh, I think it's Genesis 46, 7, where he talks about uh, Jacob bringing his cattle on down to Egypt. And I'm telling you, cattle is just, it's people that are spiritually bound, connected into you, following you. Uh, you know, Rachel's name, Rachel and Leah, Rachel means you or sheep, you know, and Rachel, beautiful, she was fair, and her name also, she, she was a powerful, she had the, 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 she had the spiritual gift of visions and sight, her stature to behold, you know, so she was like a priestess in a way, really connected into God, to the divine circuitry, you know, and that's why Jacob fell in love with Rachel. He wanted Rachel more than anything. Leah was called tender-eyed, which means weak of the, the heart or of the eyes, but or, or weary. Jesus said, blessed is the weary. So once again, there's this divine mystery with the women coming forth in humility, loving, kindness, compassion. Whereas when you're looking at the men, it's all about darkness and war and crazy stuff. There are men that are walking with God. But I'm telling you spiritually, the divine seed of God is represented by women. And, you know, there's all this cover-up. Even, you know, all, the, all the, the people going down into Egypt, it's sons of sons of sons. Well, I'll tell you, you know, every time you hear a daughter mentioned, you need to take special notice because since they never mention wives or daughters, when they do mention them, that means there's something there to behold. And likewise, you know, Dinah, the daughter of uh, Jacob, Judgment, Rachel, and Leah, their roles, what they did, their event cycles, the reflection of it, what it means in the fullness of the synchronicity of the ages, you know. 
the inheritance. And one last thought, you know, dividing up stuff is usually bad. Dividing night from day, that was a spiritual dividing of dark people, dark spiritually from people of light. But dividing lands, which happened in the time of Peleg, is another shadow manifestation on dry land. But anytime we divide ourselves by language, by land, by religion, by whatever, it is never good, my friends. We need to unite in love and in truth. Hey, this is Operation End Times. I'm your Jedi warrior, Ben Hellestead, and this is Building the Ark 2.0.